This is an Australian jewel beetle, and it's brown and shiny, and it likes to spend its time trying to find other shiny brown beetles to mate with, which was a problem when Australians started throwing out these brown beer bottles they call stubbies because they're brown and shiny, and the beetles were trying to mate with them, which, as you can imagine, doesn't end up producing a little baby beetle. And these beetles were actually having a problem with their reproduction, with, with, with their populations. Now, before you go on and on about how stupid these beetles are not knowing how to live in the modern world, humans are actually kind of doing the same thing, but not with beer bottles. I'm Curtis Bowdy, and welcome to the Scope of Science. Now, today we're going to talk about five ways that humans just didn't really evolve to live in the modern world. When the way something has evolved doesn't match up with its current environment, we have a name for that. We call it an evolutionary mismatch. Today we're going to talk about five of them in humans. When I was a kid, I had two teeth that I had to get removed because they wouldn't fit, and then I had to get braces to get everything else adjusted. You may have had a similar experience, or you may have had wisdom teeth that you needed to get removed. Now, why don't those teeth just fit in our jaw like they should? I mean, if you think about it, back in prehistoric times, having a problem with your teeth, well, that could kill you. You could get an infection, or the pain could be too much that you wouldn't be able to chew, and you wouldn't be able to eat. So how come we have this problem if we've been evolving for billions of years? You see, our jaws evolved to be able to chew a lot of food because we didn't have processed foods and before that we didn't even have cooked food. So our jaws didn't evolve for what we now eat, which means that we're chewing less these days. And since we chew less, our jaws don't develop to be as big, which means we don't have as much space for our teeth. Thankfully now we have dentistry and we can actually get rid of these teeth these extra ones without killing people, usually. The most common reason for an elderly person to break a bone is called osteoporosis. And that's caused by the fact that we don't use our bodies like we used to. We are more sedentary than ever before. And since we're not impacting our bodies as much and using our bones and muscles as much when we're little, our bones don't develop to be as strong as they need to be. That's what normal bones should look like, but when we don't use them enough, they end up looking like this, and those bones are more likely to break. So yeah, evolutionary mismatch can cause broken bones. Number three, myopia, most often called nearsightedness. Now, this may surprise you, but we didn't evolve to be watching YouTube and reading books all the time. As we develop and we spend more of our time reading screens close up, that development actually changes how our eyes are formed and how the muscles in our eyes function. Meaning that when we get older, we need to have glasses to be able to correct our vision. Now, it's great that we can correct our vision in the modern era using glasses and laser eye surgery and contacts but it's possible to just avoid getting nearsightedness altogether in a lot of cases, just by making sure that young people get an equal amount of exposure to the outdoors where they have to see far away as they do seeing things close up, like on YouTube. Number four, many forms of cancer are actually mismatched diseases, at least in part. Take, for example, skin cancer. Now, we live in a time where you can just hop on a plane and move practically anywhere, and your body may or may not be able to naturally withstand the sunlight in that new environment. Now, if you get sunburnt regularly, that affects your DNA, and you can eventually develop skin cancer from that. So, wear sunscreen. For women, having fewer children increases your risk of developing ovarian cancer. And we live in an age and a culture where it's okay, and I'm not saying it's not, it is okay to have fewer and fewer kids. And a lot of people don't even have kids. But that actually does affect their risk of developing ovarian cancer. Now this one's a little more tricky as to what do we do about it. We can't just put on sunscreen. I'm not saying that women should be pregnant all the time. I'm just saying it's a case of evolutionary mismatch, like it or not. You may have seen images like this comparing the Big Mac supersized era to 40 years ago when our pizza and our Big Mac was much smaller. But 
This is still way out of proportion with how we actually evolved. And we also evolved so that during times of plenty, we could build up energy stores so that we can make it through those harder times. So we really developed a sweet tooth and we really love to eat calorie rich food and sugary, salty food. Obesity is on the rise in every country in the world. And in America, it costs $147 billion a year in medical expenses, expenses that wouldn't otherwise happen. Our bodies evolved to eat calorie rich food but it didn't evolve for a time when calorie rich food was basically limitless as it is today, or for a time when we are more sedentary than ever. We spend most of our time either lying down asleep or sitting at a desk. And that's just not the same as eating a small amount and running across the Sahara Desert. In David Lieberman's book, The Story of the Human Body, he talks about how evolutionary mismatch is actually a very big and important deal for medicine. Because so far we've just really been trying to treat the symptoms of all of these diseases. We can get rid of wisdom teeth or we can just give kids sugar-free gum and as they're developing they'll chew more and they'll use their jaws more and by doing that they'll be less likely to have a problem with wisdom teeth at all. I hope that in my lifetime we can cure cancer but it would be really nice to prevent people from getting skin cancer by making sure they wear sunscreen. There's so many ways that we can prevent these evolutionary mismatches from affecting our health and our well-being but to do it, we really need to start taking more of an evolutionary perspective on our health and on medicine. If you find things like evolution and medicine and health interesting, I recommend this book. It'll give you a good sense of the story of human evolution as well as all of these weird phenomenons called mismatch diseases. I have named five, but the list is gargantuan. There are so many of these mismatch diseases. So please check out the book, and if you think some of this is controversial, I'm sure actually a lot of it is, I'm not going to get into that in this video. You can read the book, it covers some of that, but if you just want to chat, leave some comments in the comment section below. I'm curious to hear what you think about this. On the scope of science, I regularly release videos about plants and rocks and evolution and space and all sorts of science topics. So if you like that kind of stuff, consider subscribing, and thanks so much for watching.